Right, hello again YouTube. Welcome to another video. As promised, I'm going to have a go at rollering two-pack paint. So I've got a couple of different types of rollers because I've had uh, a couple of conflicting opinions as to which is the best to use. So I've got a, like a short head emulsion roller, which I don't think is going to work myself, but we'll give it a go because it was suggested I, I think the hair is going to pull out the roller. But we'll see how that goes. And I've got foam rollers, which I was told are not the best type. But in my experience of rolling enamel paints, these work really well. So we'll see what happens with the two-pack. So I'm using the, the two-pack epoxy paint, which I use for underneath the car, the Hermine White. And also I'm going to have a go with the uh, epoxy primer as well. Let's see how that gets on. So see how that goes. Uh, thank you for those that come and said hello in the car show one or two did and that was nice to say to make faces to people who have commented on the channel and and enjoy the channel it's uh, good to uh, have a in-person chat unfortunately the escort didn't make it the uh, it, things didn't line up for that but hey ho is another always another year on the car show so what i've done i've dragged out the bonnet for the um pop and i'm going to uh, clean that off flat it back with some 600 grit paper and you know, just to I'm not going to go overboard with that, just to, just going to get a feel of what, what happens with rolling the paint. Local crows having a go as well. <laughs> and so we'll see how we get on. So keep watching space. We'll see, hopefully by the end of the video, we'll have come to a conclusion as to whether two-pack paint can be rollered, uh, how fast it goes off, if it comes off too fast. It's a reasonable size panel I'm doing with the bonnet there. So it gives an idea of how quickly we can move along with it and whether we can keep a wet edge on it. So keep watching, see how we get on. Here's the basic materials I'm going to use. So, I've got the foam rollers, motion rollers, some uh, mushroom punnets, I believe these were, some cut down uh, milk cartons, and thinners, some various grades of paper, and a bit of tissue there, rags off. And of course, I'll put some uh, blue gloves on as well. 600 grit paper I'm going to gouge out of this, I'm not going to worry about filling that or anything I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to see what sort of finish we can get with it I'm not worried about getting the, this, this bonnet into any sort of show condition or anything So we've got our bonnet there now ready and prepped up for some primer. So I'll mix the primer up and we'll chuck some on with the roller, do two different types and see how we get on. Okay, so this is the epoxy primer mixed up with no thinners because the thinners I got is for ordinary 2K, polyester 2K, not epoxy 2K. So we just have to see how it goes. And we're going with the foam first. So let's load it up. And see what it goes on like. That's going on okay. Oops, not film it. It's going on okay. Yeah, so I can make a work with that. 
where it's yeah, even where it's going off a bit, it's 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 rolling on okay. Right, I shall mount the camera and go with the rest now. Right, well it's definitely doable, you don't have the working time with it as you might have with um, an ordinary primer. But it's definitely gone on, you can see it looks like it's been heavily sprayed on. Now, a couple of bits here which, I've, uh, which I think have picked up from the foam roller, it was starting to get a bit too tacky there. And pick it up on the foam roller so a lesson learned from that is don't go back over what's already been done so we'll leave that hard enough now and flat it back and see what it looks like okay 24 hours later a couple of paper nibs on it but uh on the whole it seems to have gone off okay it's reacted with something here some layer underneath i think possibly the panel wipe was still in there i didn't leave it long enough for the panel wipe to dry out but hey ho at least we've got a nice bit on this side we can work with aware that ordinarily you'd be uh, putting you wouldn't necessarily rub this down maybe just put a key in it and then you'd put your filler primers over the top of the, the epoxy but I'm just interested in getting a smooth surface now to, to see how the top coat goes on right there we go that's that flatted back I'll see uh, these areas are a bit manky but I'm not going to worry too much about them and we've got the scratch there so but we've got a nice flat area here that we can play with and down across the front it's not too bad either so we'll see how this responds to a bit of paint right it's the paint mixed up so again this is just paint and activator but this is a bit thinner because the activator is a bit thinner on the uh, 2k so we'll uh, get a foam roller and see what this looks like Yeah, that's not bad at all, in fact. Okay. Let's roll away in. You've got a lot more working time with it than you have with the uh, epoxy, which is good. 
very similar to rolling rustoleum. The uh, same air bubble as you get with rustoleum, so we'll see how that pans out with keeping the air bubbles out of it. Okay, so a weird thing is happening. So we try to run it slowly. Okay, so with rust oleum, what I used to do to get the was just, just leave the on its own weight roll. But you can see what's happening here now. It's making the paint up like strings, which is quite weird. Is settling back down again. Let's see what happens. We try to overcoat where it's just starting to set up. This is an experiment just to see how it responds. Right, I'm going to leave that bit on purpose like that with the air bubbles in it just to see what happens with them. Apart from the air bubbles on this side, because I've done that on purpose, just to see how how they uh, respond. But that is not half bad. And that's just one coat. So between coats, obviously you'd flat back before you apply the next coat. Just like you would with, uh, if you're doing any sort of like a rust oleum. Get the camera doesn't want to focus. There we go. <coughs> so that was... Uh, Nicer to work with than I expected. So we'll leave that set off now, flat it back, and give it a polish and see what it comes up like. Okay, so it's a couple of days later. Been busy with work and life and you know other stuff that gets in the way of the stuff I actually want to do. So back in the garage and uh, have a look at our bonnet again. I'll flip the camera around. Uh, in hindsight. This is probably going to be too much work to bring back for working on an exterior panel. So we're probably back with the idea of spraying it, a probably better idea. But you can uh, see there's a lot of imperfections in it. Uh, you see all, all, over, all over here. So it's where the, um, the foam has bubbled the paint. Now this is fine with other paints because they like rust oleum because you've got longer period of time where you can work with it but here you just see the, the craters so i'm probably am fighting a losing battle here although my initial enthusiasm about this process i'm um, probably okay for like painting over um the gravitex and that and perhaps into internally painting but for external finish i think this would be a bit too much but i'm going to persevere nonetheless and just over this, uh, this side here, where we've got the two coats and the worst of the bubbling, flat this back and see what happens. So we'll start off with 600 grit and uh, then work our way down for the grits and then we'll use some G3 compound and polish a little bit area up to see, see what does happen. I'm, I'm curious now as to how well or bad this will turn out. Okay, so this is a, a 1200 grit and we're already starting to get through the layers here. Oops, big grit in that. Okay, 
Okay, so you can see we've flattened this back. I don't know if you can pick up on the on the video here, but there's lots of little dots in it. And these are the pits from the from you can see the um the air bubbles. Once they're flatted open, what you've got then is just the what would have been the centres of the air bubbles, if that makes sense. So this isn't looking too promising, but we'll have a go at polishing it up nonetheless and see what transpires. So we'll start off with some G3 paste and uh, just hand polish it and see what, see what it comes up like. Foil off it first would be a good idea. A little bit of fresh cloth to polish off with. Yeah, and the next step then, a bit of hand polish hand glaze. Okay, and the result of that is a nice shiny finish, but on close up, we'll uh, see it. Well, for, for start, it's a bit thin in places, so that wouldn't be any good anyway. See if we rub through there, but we still got these pock marks all in it. So, from this area, yeah, that looks amazing, but up close, not so much. Okay, so what have we learned from that? Uh, well, quite a lot, I'd say. I've certainly learned a lot from it. Mostly that rollering 2K probably isn't the way forward. Uh, I've certainly not had the success that I, or the finish I could get with Rust-Oleum. I could get a much nicer finish in that with Rust-Oleum. Um, I think for interior and areas which are going to eventually get covered over with carpet and, and headlining or whatever, I think this is the way forward. To, to do this, especially over Gravitex coating, it'd be perfect for that. Paint, uh, br brush, and roller for the bigger areas, fantastic. But for facing panel, I don't think this is the way forward. I think it will be spraying. So, down the line, when I get to that process in the cards, I'm, I'm a fair way off worrying about that anyway. Um, but down the line, then I have to get a, a better spray gun perhaps and and uh, mess about with that. But I'm uh, I'm a fair way off that. I was just curious to see how this would roll her, and that's answered my questions. And I hope it's answered the question for you as well if you were thinking about it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It's been a, a bit of a slow one getting off the road and getting, getting uh, up on air. So apologies for that. It's been a couple of weeks since I last posted. A lot has gone on in our lives in that two weeks. We've had the car show, which was really nice. We enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed that. Some fantastic cars down there. I'll put. Um, a few pictures up of the cars I found particularly interesting uh, in a moment and just leave them then run through so you can see for yourselves what sort of cars are down there. And thanks again for those who come up and said hello. Nice to nice to meet uh, a couple of the subscribers. That was really lovely for you guys to come up and say hello. So hopefully next year, the car show for next year, we will get the Escort there. I would imagine it'll be rolling, possibly even run, running by then. Um, I, I doubt very much it'll be finished. There's still an awful lot of work left to do. Um, but now she's on her, on her wheels and uh, there's some weight in the car. I can start putting the front arches on, 
and I've got the bubbles ready for the arches as well. So that'll be the next video, putting the, the bubbles in the arches on the front and getting them to line up and getting the wings to line up with the doors and that because it makes a big difference having the car on its wheels to get the panels lining up nicely than it does uh, having the car on, on a jig because as much as you don't want them to, they do move slightly and that slight movement can make a big difference to the panel gaps. So that'll be the next one. I hope you'll tune in for that. Thanks for watching this one and I uh, hope it was informative. Right, let's see if we can get some tech screws out. What the? That's quite pointy. Let's try that again. Oh. <coughs> right, let's see if we can get some tech screws in place. <coughs>